if you have to be reactive to the impacts of climate change, then it's actually already too late. My research really helps to inform uh, the targets that we should be setting for limiting warming to 1.5 or 2 degrees. It tells us about the carbon budget that we still have left. Uh, it tells us about where we should be in 2030, 2040 or 2050 uh, in order to limit warming to the targets of the Paris Agreement. On the one hand, I look at uh, the, the physical needs, so how much carbon we can still emit. But then I also look at how society can transform from today to a zero carbon society. On that path we can then define the, the milestones and the benchmarks for 2030, for 2040 of where we have to be. We live on a planet and that planet, our, our, our reality is, is ruled by physical laws. And if we try to make policies to limit climate change, to save the environment, it is important that these policies are rooted in our best understanding of how our world works. A successful COP26 for me would deliver at least in two areas. And one of them is the in-process, the negotiations themselves, where there are several aspects where uh, rules need to be decided about how emissions are traded, how, how they are reported and so on. The second overarching and most important part is that countries come forward with new updated, more ambitious targets for 2030 and for 2035 that put the world on to a track to reach net zero by mid-century. Without those targets, without governments imagining, developing and then setting those targets for 2030 and seeing how their societies can transform, all the rest is just kind of noise. Through its insights, science can become kind of an arbiter whether countries are doing sufficient to limit warming to 1.5 or 2 degrees. They can kind of call countries out, call governments out about their lack of progress on climate change. And that is really a very powerful and also a very inspiring position to be in.